Hi, I'm Matt, and on today's Matt's World DIY, I'm going to focus on the landscaping phase of my patio project. This is a easy DIY project that anyone can do, so let's get to it. So I want to show you, before I put any da anything down, I started with my underlayment. This is a weed barrier that I got off of Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description. And then I had two yards, that's right, two yards of crushed limestone delivered. And uh, that's Sammy in the truck. I found him on Facebook Marketplace. He was another really nice guy, super awesome. And I almost had to tell him to stop because he was delivering so much to me. Now comes the hardest part of this whole project, which was hauling all of that rock from the front of the house, around the side to the back of the house. This, let me tell you, killed me about three times because I was so, so tired. This was a lot of rock, but uh, I was doing it by myself and all I had to do was say, take your time, pace yourself, get your rest in between and do what you can. So I got all of this done, all of this was done in one day, but let me tell you, it was exhausting and backbreaking. Now you may also be asking, what in the world is that wheelbarrow that you're using? Well, number one, it's not a wheelbarrow, it's a yard cart. I've had it for many years. The handles are broken, but it's still usable. So what I did was I took some free lumber I got from Lowe's and I screwed it onto the sides to make it more like a wheelbarrow. And actually this works out better because the handles extend out farther away from the front wheels that I can use it without my feet getting caught underneath. Anyway, I am nearing the end of hauling all of this rock onto my project in the backyard. And let me tell you, it's there's no better feeling than getting that last load in the on the ground. And here we are looking at the final part of all of it's out. Now comes the easier part, which I did on a different day, which is smoothing all the rock out. So I have my hard rake and I like using the top side of the rake, the one without the tines on it, to do a lot of that major pushing and, uh, and smoothing out of the rock. This also supports my philosophy on work smarter, not harder. Find ways to get the job done without breaking your back, yet still achieving your goals. And actually, this is actually very, very therapeutic where I'm able to uh, work with this rock and get things done. Okay, so here I am pulling my plants back onto my, I want to call it my stage with rabbit ears, uh, onto the stage. Those are pygmy date palms and the plant on the far right is a variety of elephant ear, which I ended up having to move because the sun is so hot. It was baking the leaves and I just, uh, you'll notice later that they're not in the picture anymore. Here I'm leveling my eight year old fountain. It's an egg fountain that I absolutely love. Not only do I love it, but a lot of friends love it and the birds love it too. I'll talk more about that in a minute. And But I also had to get power out to that fountain. So I just ran a cord along the edge and here I'm attaching the pump to the fountain. Then all I have to do from here is fill it up with water and watch it go. And Again, like I said, the birds, the wildlife really love this fountain because it's a gentle little stream of water. And I've actually found, uh, uh, <laughs> last year, I found a squirrel loved to come and lay on top of the fountain. And he kind of just had a little percolating water on his chest as he would lay flat on the top. That was kind of funny. But I love the fact that not only I can enjoy this fountain, but it's also a nice uh, relief for the animals in the area that need water in this incredible heat. We've been having heat of 100 plus degrees every day and no rain, so this is terrible. What you see laying down here is the edging that I'm going to use for the edge of the rock garden. It's a product I got off of Amazon and I'll put a link in the description below. Those are the stakes that you use to attach or secure the edging onto the ground so that it doesn't move or fall or whatever. They are really rigid and they are 10 inches long, I believe, and they are super effective and they just latch onto the top of the edging as the other end sticks into the ground. Here's what I had to work with. A lot of my rock had spilled over the old edging that I had uh, on the ground. So what I decided to do is just pull any rock that I could back into the form. And I left the old edging down there just kind of as a guide for me. 
that I could follow and put the new edging in its place. So again, therapy a little bit, uh, pulling that rock back into the correct shape uh, that I wanted. And here I'm laying out the new edging. And I started with just a rough deal to make sure that it, I had enough of it to go all the way around. And that's 40 feet. The patio is 18 feet wide and about 10, 8 to 10, I'd say 9 to 10 feet deep. And this was enough edging and it worked out great. And I'm very, very happy with it. So I'm double checking that I have 10 stakes here that I can use to secure the edging down. And what I was doing here is just trying to find good spacing to evenly space out where the stakes are going to go. And I was just dropping them on the ground in a rough position. I could have measured it all out, but I was getting tired by then. So all you need is a hammer to do this. And I started with my first stake in the ground and I kind of turned the edging against the patio slab to kind of secure the very end and keep the rocks in. And then all I did is went around the perimeter of the rocks where I wanted the edging to go and just hammered the stakes into place. And it was very, very easy to do. I say the worst part of this was the sweating, the mosquitoes, and making sure that my stakes are straight up and down. Now, when I got to the end, I realized, hey, this isn't laying flat like I needed to. So I realized I was gonna have to dig into the ground a little bit just to make sure that my edging stayed on the ground and didn't have any gaps underneath. And then when you get to the end, very simple. All you have to do is use a shop knife, a box cutter, and cut it uh, to length that you want. Now you'll notice here when I got to the edge, I left a bit of a gap between the slab and where my edging is. And I did that because I have that power cable going at the end of the concrete to the fountain. And I wanted to leave that open a little bit. So that was my last stake. And man, I was like, oh, thank goodness this project is wrapping up a little bit. The final thing that I have to do to enjoy my space is pull the rock against the edge of the edging just to make it look a little bit more finished. Uh, it's kind of like decorating a cake and uh, finalizing the very top coat and finishing it up. And so what I did was I started with my hoe to pull the rock more close to the edge and I'm reaching the very end. This is the end where I had started and I'm reaching the end and that is that. So to do the very final stage of my uh, smoothing out of the rock, I used my hard rake and I, I switched from using the top of the rake to the tines of the rake just to get the rock in exactly the position that I wanted. And here we have it. Finally, this project is starting to wrap up. There are some more things that I have to do. So keep your eyes peeled on what is going to come up next because this is not the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, check out some of my other DIY projects I have on my DIY playlist. See you next time!